Hello and welcome to a new video about automation. This time we are going to talk about yet another level of automation. This time we are going to talk about uh, enterprise automation, let's call it. Yeah? So I do not have, let's say we are an operator which is not only owning one power plant, we own several power plants. We are a big operator, we own, I don't know, five, six, seven big power plants and some small ones and everywhere uh, there are such operators. Yeah? Last time we talked about the plant itself. Yeah? The day or the video before last time we talked about the unit. So we automated the unit, then we automated the plant. Now let's have a look if we have several plants what might be the reason to automate, to do always there an automation also. Yeah? So we do have some enterprise automation, let's call it. Yeah? Enterprise automation. Hmm? So we said we have several plants. Huh? Plant one, plant two, plant three, and so on and so on. Two, three, tut, tut, tut. Huh? Why do I have to control what every plant is doing? Well, you know, stability of network is an issue. If I'm turning here on or off this lamp, somebody needs to produce more or less power. With this lamp it's not that critical. But let's say we all turn off our lamps at the same time synchronized. Then we might get some already quite some power which we can switch off and on. If we are turning off and on big machinery or something like this, yeah, poo, yeah. and if there is a failure in the network and a whole branch of the network is switching off, I have too much power, yeah, producing too much power. All my plants producing too much power because this district number whatever is off the grid. So I need to control the power of the plants. I need to reduce or raise the power according to, to the current consumption. There are also constraints from the plants. So, for instance, there's a runoff river power plant. I mentioned it last time. Runoff river power plant, there is water coming. We need to process this water. We don't want to waste it, we need to process it. So, there is some base load which can be covered. And now let's imagine what should happen if there is heavy rainfall or something like this, there's a lot of water and nobody needs the power right now. What then? Yeah. Then I maybe have pump storage devices under my power plant and I will start to pump water up the, up the hill. Okay. So this, this balancing, this overall balancing, this must be done somewhere. And this is here an enterprise automation. And maybe if there are smaller power plants and there's even above one instance yeah, which can control several enterprises. But however, this is in, 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 in the market. Yeah? So here we are controlling the plants, yeah? getting information from the plants yeah? because for instance, what happens if there is a failure in the plant yeah, and suddenly a unit is not available? Hmm? We need to, to start another unit instead. Yeah? Or what happens if a whole plant has an error? Yeah? Then we need, it's always the error case which is causing the most trouble. Yeah? That's, that's for sure. Yeah? So, you see, there is something to do. I also need to get 
information from a plant, what power reserve do they have? Yeah? Because I need, if something is happening in the grid, yeah, I need to push and I need to push in power. How much can I push in power? Yeah? Do I already have to start another unit yeah, to get, get enough reserve power yeah, to, to help the stability of the network or not? Yeah? These are topics. These are real topics. Yeah? What should happen if we really break the network? Yeah? If something is really happening and there is a total blackout all over Europe or whatever, yeah? Who, which plant is starting? How do we start? How do we... Yeah? This has all to be functions in the enterprise automation of this partic in this particular field. You see, there are quite some topics because then there is also the network, yeah? network automation. Just because I have a unit which could produce power doesn't mean I can produce power because if the line, the particular line where the unit can be switched to is already full, yeah, full of load, cannot, cannot transport more energy, then I'm, this is power is useless. Yeah? So I also have to have interfaces to the network automation to know, yeah, to know how much power I might be able still to distribute or not. Yeah? The network in infrastructure, the grid, yeah? need to have information to the grid, from the grid. And since here all the information is available, yeah? how much power I can produce, how much power I can distribute, yeah? how much reserve power I have, and, and also the planning of my power plants can be done here. Yeah? So I'm planning now to use this power plant for peak power. These power plants, I'm calling at the hydrological institute and say, what rainfalls do we expect? What what? Uh, this is woven. This is this is this is interacting to each other. Yeah? We need to guess how much water will flow down the Danube next week to be able. To, to plan our power plants. So, since all this information usually is available here, yeah, collected, then here is the right position for, for doing trading, yeah, power trading. It's also usually located here. Underneath. There's a stock market for electrical power and all the big players, they are involved in the stock market and they sell and buy shares of power yeah, from the network operator or from whoever. Yeah. Power trading. This is the right position to have an interface to the power trading because if I can produce produce something, yeah, and nobody's buying this, it will be cheap. Yeah? I even there is even the situation which of course every every supplier needs to wants to prevent is that I'm producing power and have to pay for this. <laughs> because see there's too much power. Yeah? Then I have to pay because I'm delivering. Also possible. Huh? This is the stock market here. This needs to be because here the enterprise automation needs to know how much I've promised I bought from the shares huh? and how much I need to produce that I can distribute well. Hmm? Enterprise automation. You see, the, the more you get away from the actual unit, the more abstract this topic is getting. Yeah? But you should also have learned now that it is absolutely necessary to have this. Yeah? Here from this level a unit 
is not really interesting. I'm interested in how much megawatts I have still reserve, how much megawatts I can produce if this is coming from this or that unit. Yeah. Or what the bearing temperature of a particular unit is here. Okay, I could look. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really interested in it. It's a bit lower level. I should deal with this. Yeah. yeah, see, these are the different focuses of the levels. Yeah. These I wanted to, to bring out, yeah. show you why it is looking that way and that it does make sense. Okay. So we have here this enterprise automation. Yeah. Within the enterprise automation, we have the different plants. Big plants, small plants, whatever. Yeah. And within the plants, we have our unit. Yeah. Smaller unit, bigger units. Tiny units, a lot of tiny units, only one unit, different. And somewhere here, we are an automation engineer and we're doing our stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is, that's it. Hmm. Between all those th things here, all those connected devices, uh, there are always interfaces in between. Okay? So I can look into wherever. Yeah? There are interfaces. There are interfaces between the systems. There are interfaces between the plants. There are interfaces. There are interfaces. There are interfaces. Yeah? And there is even an interface for my operation. I need to pre have present I need to present this information I'm gathering and I need to make some buttons or whatever yeah, that I can control this, this thing. Yeah. It's nice to watch, but I want to control it also. Of course, yeah. it's my machine. It's my machine! Yeah. Interfaces. Our next topic. Next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.